the Mason again, Adam Shalom. He says, how is toil and success in Torah related? Not the way people think usually. The Gemara says, if someone says to you, I work hard, yagati, velo matzati. Altami. I worked hard, but I didn't find. I break my head in the Gemara and I tried and I tried. I didn't come out with nothing. Don't believe him, the Gemara says. If he says, Lo yagati, matzati. If he says, I didn't work hard and I understood, no such thing. Altami. If he says, Yagati, matzati, tami. If he says, I worked hard and I found, I found the truth, then you're allowed to believe him. Why does the Gemara say a word, matzati? Yagati, don't say matzati. Say, I work and I got. I work and I and I, and I accomplished. What is it? Find. Like as if mitzia, like you found something in the street. So he says like this. Because at the end of the day, even when you work hard, it doesn't make sense that you should get. It doesn't make sense that you should, you should uh, acquire. At the end of the day, Hashem will always give it to you like a gift, like matana. It's like a mitzia. Mitzia is you won the lottery, you found something in the street. That's how Hashem gives it to you. But you need to toil. You need to be worthy of receiving this gift. How do you make yourself worthy of receiving the gift? By working hard. He gives a very powerful mashat. There was a king one time who wanted to test how devoted his people were. So he got them all together in a big square in front of a very tall tower. And this tower had a hundred stories, a hundred flight of stairs. He says, whoever goes to the top of the tower will be able to go into the treasury and take whatever he wants. So then people said, mm, it's impossible. They didn't even try. And a few people said, why not? What do I have to lose? Let's try it. Let's see if we could go up the old stairs. So they, walk, they some people brought boots. Some people start, brought ropes. And some people brought, you know, exercise clothing to go and trying to climb all the stairs to go all the way up. So they started climbing. And one guy reached the 20th floor. Everybody said, oh, yeah, wow, we reached 20th floor. They continued cheering. He got to the 30th floor. Now he's going slower. He's tired already. It's hurting him. He says, you know what? I give up. And he falls back down. He falls all the way to his death. Because this guy was trying to climb up the side of the tower, not the stairs. He was trying to climb the side. So what happened. Another guy goes and he gets to the 40th floor. Everybody's cheering for him. He says, ah, I can't. He holds onto the window, goes in the window and goes down. He can't go all anymore. Another guy came to the 43rd, 44th, 45th. He slid down and he gave up. Old man came with a cane. Old man. He came and he says, I'm going to try. He said, oh, Saba, where is you going to go 100 floors to the top of the tower? Uh, Saba, it's not for you. And then he said, you know what? Doesn't matter. I'm going to try. Why, Saba? It's too, too, too much. If the king said to go up, it must be it's possible. It must be. He would never go and tell us to do something that's impossible. He's making a joke out of us. He's not making a joke out of us. So therefore, with this, he climbed. He got to the 40th floor. His head started to spin. He was holding onto the wall so he shouldn't fall down. He almost gave up, but he said to himself, if the king said to do it, must be we were able to do it. He got to the 40th floor, 46th floor, just a little bit more, a little bit more. He got 48th. And he says, what? 49? He got to the 50th floor. He fell. He was about to faint. His eyes half open and half closed. And all of a sudden, he sees the king standing there. And the king is on the 50th floor. And the king said, you made it to the 50th floor. Come, I'll take you. The elevator is right here. Elevator goes straight to 100th floor. You see, most people, they thought, I have to get 100th floor. Impossible. How am I going to get there? Therefore, don't even start. I don't even try anything. But other people who are smart and they believe in God and they say, God said to do this, must be able to do this. So therefore, what do they do? They say, it's not my job to figure out how and when and who and where. My job is to try. My job is to try. And then will they, what will they be shocked? They will be shocked to see that when they get halfway there and they think they cannot continue and they think there's no way, the old doors are closed. All of a sudden he sees the king there standing. Oh, new door opens. Come, I show this door only to you. Why? Because he worked hard, then he was worthy of the gift. Hashem opened a door that didn't exist. And Hashem says, come, now you come with me, you go straight to 100th floor. And then a person says, how did you get there? 100th floor, it doesn't make any sense. Nobody could get there. Even they tried from here till tomorrow, nobody will ever get there. Because my friend, I'm not using myself. I'm using Hashem. Hashem is with me. But I didn't just open the door of Hashem. I had to go till the last 50th step, fall on my face, almost pass out. And then Hashem says, ah, oh, you found the door. Let me open the door for you. Come with me. 
You understand? That's what it's called. Yagati matzati ta'amin. If a guy says, I accomplished it without yagati, without toiling, don't believe him. If you see a guy who toiled and he says, I didn't find, also you're not allowed to believe him. How could it be you worked so hard and Hashem didn't help you? It must mean you didn't really yagati. It means you didn't really push yourself to the end. You think you did, but you didn't push yourself to the end. And if you would push yourself really to the end, you really did yagati according to your abilities, then matzati, you will for sure find and ta'a means. Therefore, when you toil, when you push yourself, don't worry. Hashem will open the door for you. He'll be waiting for you. And he will take you to say the Shema to the floor. That's the Rami, Rami, Rami Pano. He writes, he says, this in the Parasha, it says, Zod Hokata Adam. This is the hok of a man. Ki Adam Yamut Ba'oim. When a person dies in the tent, this, the Torah says the, the law of Tumah, right? He has everything in the tent is impure. But the Gemara says that whoever we learn from here, Zod Torah Adam, this is the Torah of a person. And when you learn Torah, you have to be like a good person in the tent. You have to kill yourself, right? You have to make yourself available to push yourself, everything away, all the distractions, and learn Torah. So the Imam Epano says, when a person devotes himself so much to the Torah, you feel like you're dying. You feel like you're pushing yourself to the limit. You feel like I can't anymore, and you push yourself because you want to do the mitzvah. Says the Imam Epano, this, that you killed yourself, you push yourself, it's as if you died in Kiddush Hashem. Wow. The kapara of dying in Kiddush Hashem, the Rabbeinu Yonah says, Chilul Hashem, the only thing for kapara is to die. Says, when the Rabbi Pano says, when you push yourself, devote yourself, like you kill yourself, you push yourself to the end. For the Torah, Hashem counts it as if you died in Kiddush Hashem and you get all the kaparot for all the korbanot. So if a person has to know, and not for no reason, you get a Seyad Shmaya, and not for no reason, you get such a cleansing because this is the power of a person devoting himself to Hashem. Baruch